Hi guys, it's Alan and welcome back to the Library of Alexandria. And today guys, today I am actually going to do on time my November wrap up. It feels like I just did a wrap up, but that's because I was so, so, so late with my October one that it was like, was it like a week ago, week and a half ago or something? Anyway, I'm gonna do the November one actually on time. So in November, my reading fell even further from last month. I don't know what my problem is. Guys, work, ugh. Teaching, teaching's a drag sometimes, man. Guys, I got a stack of papers like this big that I'm supposed to grade or that I have to grade or that I, I should always be grading. A, B, G, always be grading. Thanks, Alec Baldwin. Anyway, so I only read about 2,200 pages this month, down from 2,300 pages from last month, down from 2,900 pages from the previous month. I just can't I can't I can't catch a break here. So I only read four books this month down from five from last month, but two in my defense, two of these books were 650 bleeding pages so long. And I did read the last 200 pages of Akatar at the beginning of November. So that counts toward the point total and counts away from books. I counted Akatar in my October count. So, of these four books, three of them were fantasy, and one was a gothic thriller classic. It was a classic. So, that was, you know, nice change of pace. Uh, the star ratings, though, were better. I didn't have any 1.5 stars. Akatar. Uh, one of them was three stars. I had one three and a half star, and then I had two five stars. Uh, one's kind of a question mark five star, but I did have two five star reads this month. So, without wasting any more time, let us dive right into the four books that I read in November. November was a bit of a strange month. I didn't actually get to uh, put out any of my review videos for any of these books just yet. I was, I was uh, doing some other things with, uh, there were a couple tags I needed to do. I needed to get my Poppy War video out, my Discworld video out, um, some reviews from the previous month that I had not actually put out. So all four of these books have dedicated reviews that will be coming out. Um, in the coming days. So if you want to know more about my extended thoughts of these rather than the Cliff's Notes version, be sure to check out those reviews as they come out. So starting off with, of course, the lowest star rating of the month, and that is Boosh, The White Rose, the third book in the Black Company series. So the White Rose concludes, it's hard to talk about the third book in a series. You don't want to spoil anything, especially not in a wrap up. People aren't clicking on the actual like book review video. Black Company series as a refresher is about this mercenary, this storied mercenary company called the Black Company that has kind of seen better days and uh, when it was first formed and you know, in its history, it has these large legendary contracts that it's taken and it's kind of like, eh, it's not really there anymore. And so it's written from the perspective of the, uh, the company's analyst, Croker, who, so he is the narrator, he narrates everything because he's essentially writing it down in the journals of the company. And the Black Company is broken up into really three different arcs. There's the Books of the North, um, the Books of the South, and then the, the Books of the Glittering Plain. And so White Rose concludes the original trilogy, the Books of the North. And for being a conclusion book, guys, I think the White Rose is the weakest of the first three books. It's a conclusion, yeah, and it really satisfyingly closes out that arc and while setting up the next one, and it's fine, but there's so many elements about this one that take away some of the stuff that I really like from the first two books. There's not a whole lot of company camaraderie due to you know the circumstances and everything. We and I can't really talk about that stuff there. There's no real great characters, uh, even if they're super unlikable, like Marin Shed from Shadows Linger, which I loved. It takes place in the Plains of Fear, which is just freaking weird, guys. There's flying whales, like the whales fly and are made of like flammable gases. And there's these talking mean hairs, these talking standing stones that just appear out of nowhere and say, Croker, there are strangers in the plane. I miss, like, I don't know. I don't know how rocks talk me. Croker, there are strangers in the plane. Or, I don't know, how do, how, do, how do rocks talk? Oh, Croco, there are strangers in the plane. Who knows? Anyway, you hear that a lot. The rocks just appear. And so, like, you don't get a, a, a whole bunch of the, the, all of the, a bunch of the cooler elements, like the, the like dangerous and, and cool stuff that's really interesting, at least for me, for the first two books. A lot of that is missing 
here. In addition, White Rose also has the multi point of view perspective uh, that Shadows Linger did. And and again, it's it's told that way because it's understood that Croker is getting a lot of this uh, these secondary perspective second hand and he's comping them that's how the uh, that conceit gets so kind of gets away with it away from the first person narrative of croker and the, the other points of view just aren't nearly as interesting as they were in shadows linger the other perspectives are essentially long-term flashback and then like a medium-term flashback and then the present and it's all some of those are just a drag and it's hard to see what the point of a lot of it is. Now, some of the twisty turnies and some of the stuff that it says about identity and about how people on opposing sides of the conflict can be nearly identical in their struggles and what kind of identity is foisted upon you by the people around you. So it does say some interesting things about that. It's just, it's just fine compared to Shadows Linger. It, and even Black Company, it's just it's just fine. It's three stars. I enjoyed reading it. My biggest problem with this is how long it took me to read. It's 300 pages, and it took me a week. Like, it took me a week. I read Mistborn, which is 650 pages in a week. I read Dragon Republic in six days, also 650 pages. It just took me a week to read, and that's why I'm mad at it, because it took an entire, it took a fourth of my reading time for just this short book. So, so thus concludes the Books of the North. I am actually gonna put a pause on my Black Company rereads until Mark, uh, my buddy Mark over at Slowly Read, in his Discord, he is going to be hosting a Black Company read-along all next year. So I'm probably gonna pause and wait until they catch up and start reading book four, The Silver Spike, and then I'll just join them and keep reading it with them, because it's fun to have people um, to read along with. I also know, check out my buddy Andy over at Andy Smith, his channel. He's uh, reading the first three books of The Black Company this month, so he'll have something to say over on his channel pretty soon as well. Moving on to my three and a half star book, we have Boosh, Rebecca, by Daphne du Maurier. So this, I had no idea what this book is about. If you check out my TBR when I was talking about it, I thought it might be some kind of ghost story or who knows. I just knew it was gothic, which I love. Um, and a kind of a suspense thriller kind of book. So the plot of this, without giving anything away, is there is this 21-year-old uh, woman whose name we are never told. She is known as Mrs. De Winter because in the opening chapters, she meets this very mysterious widower um, who is wealthy and he's, you know, he's in charge of an estate called Manderley. And uh, he proposes to her and she goes and lives with him. And she finds out when she's there that the shadow inspector of his ex-wife, Rebecca, just looms large over all the proceedings and everyone compares her to Rebecca and everyone talks about Rebecca in all these like glorious terms and she just everywhere she looks it's R Rebecca she tries to tell the freaking butler hey can I get coffee up in this library and he's like uh, um, uh, Mrs. De Winter always used to take coffee in the drawing room and it's like like if I was her I'd be like dude I'm Mrs. De Winter now give me my coffee right cha right cha so, there's a lot of that. It reminds me a lot of a creepy Downton Abbey. Like, I was prepared for this. There's a lot of terminology in this that I wouldn't have gotten if I hadn't watched Downton Abbey, but Manderley's essentially Downton Abbey. It's just creepier. And, you know, Mrs. Danvers is like a super creepy Mrs. Hughes, and Frith is like a great value brand Carson. And so there's a lot of that with the servants and, and valets. I wouldn't know what a valet was if I hadn't seen Downton Abbey, and I love Downton Abbey. Uh, so if you've never seen Downton Abbey, it's a show about lords that live in a big manor called Downton Abbey and it's about them and their servants and the servants live downstairs the servants live downstairs yeah and um or they work downstairs but live like up up upstairs maybe I don't know anyway doesn't matter servants and and their and their masters that, that's what it's about and nothing ever happens nothing ever happens and yet it is so so good and that really is what Re what Rebecca reminds me of it's it's a slow burn guys it's gothic so everything is just a really slow build. The prose in this is actually really good. It's extreme. It's just like an extreme sensory experience. Like we know what everything, like I know what everything smells like, looks like, tastes like, sounds like, because Mrs. De Winter is just so, she's just, 
so descriptive in her head, but not in an annoying way. I actually really like the prose for a classic. Most classics, are, the, the prose is too dense for me to read quickly at all, and it's just, they're just a slog to get through. I did not find that to be the case with Rebecca. It actually read really quickly for me. And so I really enjoyed that. Um, I liked the slow burn, a lot of the description, and just like slow heaping of dread uh, upon it was, uh, it felt very reminiscent of Lovecraft. If you like the way Lovecraft slow burns kind of dread and suspense, it's very similar to that here as well. Now, I really enjoyed this. I really enjoyed some of the reveals in this story. I really enjoyed a lot of the character work, the kind of unreliability of our narrator. I loved all of that. But what kept it from being just absolutely stellar and amazing for me was I thought a lot of things happened too early, and I think the the kind of resolution of some of the things felt, it just, after like some of the big reveals happened, like how everything's resolved, in, re in, in, in counter to that, just felt kind of like, oh, I mean, okay, all right, I mean, I guess that's cool. It's not as cool as what happened 100 pages ago, but... I mean, yeah, it's fine. And, and it's a classic, so it was slow. You know, I was never like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. So, I mean, it's three and a half stars, which I really liked. I mean, I really liked it. I recommend Rebecca to anybody, especially if you like classics, especially if you like gothic stuff. Um, I really enjoyed it. And I also got to fill in a spot with some of the best ladies on YouTube at the, the Top Shelf Society. I'll go ahead and link that live show there where, where I was, uh, I got to be a guest fill in and got to talk about um, Rebecca there, which, which was, was super, super fun. I definitely would never have read this book if I was not part of that live show, so I'm glad I did. And I'm actually eager to read uh, My Cousin Rachel, which is also by Daphne du Maurier, which I've heard is also really good. So moving on to the questionable five star. This is a five star book for me. It's Boom, The Dragon Republic by R.F. Kuang. So I really, really liked this book. I, I really liked this book. I liked this book more than I liked The Poppy War. And I know, gasp! But the plot in this one, I think, is better than The Poppy War or appeals to me more than The Poppy War. The Poppy War, the first part is her in the school and then parts two and three are about the war. And, 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 and that's fine, but most of the war is fought from uh, their small little contingent. Dragon Republic takes place just months after the end of The Poppy War and Ren... Ugh, Ren is just having to deal with with uh, the events of the first book and she's trying she's just struggling with her own with her own guilt and her own you know anger and rage and selfishness and grief uh, I mean it's she, she is going through a lot in her defense. But unlike the Poppy War, where, you know, two-thirds of it is about the war and it's from the small kind of band of uh, band of soldiers, the Dragon Republic is, is a much more about uh, military strategy at large, the, the larger military fighting larger scale conflicts, pretty much the whole book from the beginning through the whole thing, we just see we just see generals strategizing, moving armies here, pieces here, pieces there, and I love that stuff. I love the tactics involved, seeing how strategies play out, seeing the the genius of both sides uh, stymieing their efforts, and so that alone, just that plot was it just appealed to me so much. In addition, we got to see more from some of the other characters. Some of the some of the side characters, it's very clear that I mean, I don't think that Kwong really knew what to do with them. And so they don't really have a ton of personality or or serve really as anything more than, okay, these guys need to move the plot along. And that's fine. And that's fine. This is an exciting book. Again, Kwong's prose is just it just pushes you forward. There, there is no delay. Like so much happens in this book. More happens in a Kwong book than it happens in a, like she can fit more in this 650 pages than, than most people can fit in 1200. Like it's, it's like a 1200 page book compacted into a 650 page book. There's just so much happening. None of it's wasted. Except in this book, there is one section. And if you've read it, I think you know what it is. There's one section that I just thought it was dumb and I didn't like it. I didn't understand the point of it. I thought it was like hackneyed and forced. Um, there's a whole section of this, uh, this book that feels very reminiscent of um, 
like sequels to video games or 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 RPGs that have that where your character starts out really powerful. Um, and if you've ever played an RPG where your character begins really powerful, um, you kind of know how how that ends up playing out. And it felt a lot like that at at parts. And, I, and that's fine. I love RPGs, and I'm I'm along for the ride. But there, that aside, there's one section where I'm just like, what is even the point of this? Like, I just expected to see a yak somewhere, and it was such a completely different, like, it's like a completely different book it was just so weird like what's that what's that tom cruise movie where he goes and lives in like the mountains of tibet for like ever what is that tom cruise movie y'all know what i'm talking about the one where he goes and that's i'm like why did we stop all this to have tom cruise hang out in tibet i don't anyway you know what part i'm talking about so i really liked this book and i gave it five stars but this book and poppy War have been reminiscing like I'm very close to lowering both of them to four and a half just because every time I think about how much I enjoy these books, I love the plot, but I don't like anyone in the book. I hate them all. They're all terrible people. They are two books populated with dreadful human beings. I have no one to root for. I'm like, I mean, I guess I'm rooting for Ren. I'm like, you know, you go, Ren. She's the protagonist, so I'm, I'm with her. But at the same time, I'm like, I don't really care if you die because I, the other person's just as terrible as you are. So I could like them. I mean, that's fine. So I think the, I think that the, the, the lack of like characters that I, that I identify with may be kind of holding me back a little bit, but still a fantastic read. And I cannot wait to get to Burning God, which I'm reading as soon as I finish Sword of Kaigen, which I'm halfway through. And finally, by far the best book that I read in November, it is Five Stars Boosh, The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson, also known as Mistborn, number one. Okay, guys, this is my first Brandon Sanderson book I've ever read. My first Brandon Sanderson book. And guys, I loved this book so much because this book has so many things that I love about reading fantasy. Okay, guys, the world is corrupt enough as it is. The world is, is an incredibly corrupt place. I'm talking about our world, not, not the Mistborn world. That place is terrible too. But the world is so corrupt and there's so little that we as individuals or small groups can do about the corruption in the world at large that books where the world is corrupt. And this is one of the reasons I read fantasy. In fantasy, the individual and the small bands of people who have ideals are able to make a difference. And that is why I love fantasy so much. And that is just one of the huge things in Mistborn. It is this ragtag group of people trying to overthrow the evil empire. And I am just with it. I, I'm like, every character isn't fantastic, especially some of the secondary characters. I'm just like, do you have a personality beyond your, your powers? You know, I didn't really know. But the story is just so, it's like, it's just breakneck speed. It is, a, it's so weird. Cause I also really love the, the political intriguing. There's a lot of politicking in this book. This book is a weird Ashfield cross between My Fair Lady, um, Ocean's Eleven, and, 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 and a Dickens novel. And I, like, that's just the only comparison I can draw. I love the two main characters, Kelsier and Vin. I'm just with them the whole time as they're just developing their plan and to watch the, to watch the infiltrations and the things that go wrong and the things that go right and, and their adjustments on the fly. And I, I haven't even talked about the magic system. So this is my first experience with a super hard magic system where everything is really specifically laid out. And I'm really kind of on the fence about that because it really feels like when it, everything is so outlined, when everything is so limited, because it's, it's, it's hard, this does this, this equals this, it really feels like they're using magic items half the time. Like playing D&D, &D, you cast spells for like things that, you know, spells, that's fine. And then you have magic items that do this specific thing. And so I have, my, the jury is still out with me. I'm still ruminating on how I feel about hard magic systems as a rule, especially the one in here. Now, the one in here is super freaking cool. In fact, if you would like to join our revolution, we have already formed a small band of ska.
with misting powers and we are going to there's a big job plan so if you've read mistborn you want to be part of this uh ska band that's gonna that's gonna be on this big job you let me know which one you want to be we've already got a couple thugs uh, i'm a rioter we've got a soother we've got a tin eye a, um, a smoker so you know, if you if you read it, you know what that means. Um, I have plenty more to say about Mistborn, but if you wanna if you wanna hear all those thoughts, all that stuff will be in my full review. But I loved it. I'm so happy I jumped into Sanderson. Just a great storyteller, and that's why I read to to get awesome stories. And ah, uh, there was just so much about it that I just love in my books. Like there's so much that reminded me of kind of, of great coats that reminded me of the second Senlin book, especially. There's just so much in it that just reminded me of those books, of Foundry Side, of these other books that I've really loved this year. So Mistborn was written for someone like me 100% for sure. So guys, that's it for me. That's all I have for my November wrap up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, information about my Discord and Patreon are down in the description as always. And guys, I will see you next time.